Hello class, I'm Professor Dwight Hughes. This is the IP Subnetting in Tech 103 class, Module 3, the second lecture in Module 3, Lecture 4. We're looking at more of the IP subnetting tools in our toolbox, and there are five tools in all, and we'll finish off with the remaining two tools. Let's start by doing a terminology review. Take a look at the terms that we've already gone over and defined and make sure you're familiar with them. I've written some definitions here. Class would provide a default subnet mask for assigned network address settings when a mask has not been provided. The subnet mask is a companion address to the assigned network address that identifies the beginning of your host bits. The network ID is the first host in any subnet. It's the host where the host bits are all zeros. The broadcast is the last host in any subnet where the host bits are all ones. And then your usable hosts are all the host addresses that fall between the network ID and the broadcast. This is the reason we have that minus two in the finger math tool because we have to account for the network ID and the broadcast that are hosts but are not usable hosts. In our IP subnetting toolbox then, we had two prerequisites before we get started with subnetting. We need to have an assigned network address, and it has to come with a mask, or we can generate a mask using class. Then we need some user requirements. How many subnets? How many hosts per subnet? Then we're ready to start pulling tools out of the toolbox and getting to work subnetting this network. The tools that we've already covered last week are finger math, binary zoom, anding. We will look today at the remaining two tools, scratchpad and dial-in. Let's do a quick review of the tools we've already learned about. You can see on the left, that's just a review of the prerequisites. You have to have network settings. You have to have user requirements. And then the three tools we learned last week. Finger math converts the user requirements into binary. So it would tell you, for instance, how many of the host bits you needed to borrow to create the needed subnets, and how many host bits needed to remain to meet the user requirements for host per subnet. And there's a recipe there for those. We also use the binary zoom tool to take the assigned network address and convert it to a binary number so that we can identify with some lines we draw through the number where the host bits begin, where the network bits end, basically finding the network bits, the subnetwork bits, and the host bits. Finally, we use anding to be able to find a network ID or a broadcast for our network or subnetwork by converting all the host bits to zeros for a network ID or all to ones to identify a broadcast. We're going to review the first two tools in the IP subnetting toolbox. A prerequisite to subnetting will be having an assigned network address and user requirements, the subnets needed and the usable hosts needed. So we have those, but we notice that we don't have a subnet mask to go as a companion with our assigned network. So what we would do is figure out the default mask based on class so that 150 falls within class B, meaning that I would have a slash 16, or another way to write it would be 255-25500, would be the default mask, and that's what we'll go ahead and use with our network. We're ready to look at our first tool then, now that we've met our prerequisites of subnetting, we can use finger math to turn the user requirements into binary. So using finger math, I can see here's my default mask here, slash 16. That means there are 16 bits counting from the left to the right. There are 16 bits, so over to about here, before the host bits begin. So I have, in this case, 16 network bits and 16 host bits, because I know that the total length of this address is 32 bits. So if the host bits begin at the 16th bit and end at the 32nd, there are 16 of them. Now let's see if that's going to be enough to accommodate our user needs criteria. We need to have 500 subnets. 
So to tell if I'm going to have 500 subnets and how many bits I need to borrow out of the 16 host bits, I'll use the formula two to the S is greater than or equal to the needed subnets. For this, we use finger math. Just start counting on your fingers, hold up one finger and say two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. I'm holding up nine fingers to get to 512. That means we're going to need nine bits. If I borrow nine bits from my 16 available host bits, that'll leave seven left. And let's see if those seven bits, so I know there'll be seven host bits. Question is, will seven bits be enough to accommodate 125 hosts? Again, using finger math, I'll hold up my first finger and say two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. I'm holding up seven fingers to represent the seven bits. I've arrived at 128. I still need to minus the two here. So I've got 128 minus two equals 126, which is just enough to fit the 125 hosts that we need to accommodate. So that's it for finger math. It essentially tells us how many of the host bits are going to be borrowed to create our subnets. What we do now is use our next network tool, the binary zoom, to be able to apply the results of finger math into the binary. So with my binary zoom, I have calculated that I needed to have and seven bits remaining. So I just draw those out here, right? So I would just put a slash 16, because remember that's where we started with our default mask, somewhere right around here. And then we have our new mask, slash 25, which represents these nine bits. So if you count over nine, right? If you were counting all the way from the left, you would get to 25 when you reach this line, which means there's seven bits remaining for hosts. And then we go ahead and label this. made a nicer slide where I did it all digitally. Doesn't that look nice? So that's binary zoom. So we've now covered the first two tools in the IP subnetting toolbox. Let's take a look at our new tools then. The old tools are on the left. The new tools that we're going to learn today are Scratchpad and Dial-In. Scratchpad is the way that we're going to convert human counting into binary equivalent. So essentially, if someone says, hey, give me some information about subnet 10, we're able to use Scratchpad to convert that human counting into computer counting. More on that in a moment. The final tool is Dial-In. Dial-In is going to take the result of Scratchpad and paste it into the binary zoom. And we'll look at that. Scratchpad. Let's talk for a moment about how human beings count versus how computers count. A human with four apples on the table would identify them as apple one, two, three, four. A computer looking at the four apples on the table would identify them as zero, one, two, three. Notice then that there's still four apples identified but the apple that the computer points to as apple three is actually the apple the human is pointing to as apple four. For this reason, we have to subtract one when we're taking a human term like subnet 10, that's coming from a user says, give me the information on subnet 10, give me the information on subnet 12. That is a counting number that a human has derived and the actual computer number for that subnet will be one less. So step one of Scratchpad is going to be to get this converted from human speak into computer speak by subtracting a one. So here's our recipe for Scratchpad, two simple steps. Subtract one from the subnet number you want information about, then convert the resulting number from step one from decimal to binary. So for example, if someone said, give me some information about subnetwork 10, 
you would first subtract 1 from 10, giving you 9, and then you would convert 9 into binary, which would result in 1001. Next, we use the dial in tool. It also has two simple steps. You're going to take the result from Scratchpad and you're going to write that into the subnet bit portion of the binary Zoom network address. So we'll take a look at doing that and putting those steps together. This is the third tool in our IP subnetting toolbox. And Scratchpad can help us do things around finding specific subnets and the network settings associated with them. If I wanted to get some information on subnet 10, I would step 1 minus 1 from 10. Step 2, I would convert 9 into a binary number. Now dial in is a tool that bridges Scratchpad with binary zoom. So that's why you see three tools shown here on this slide. There's our result from Scratchpad in the upper right corner. Right there, that binary result, we want to go ahead and put that in the subnet bit portion of this address that we've been assigned. So binary zoom very nicely took our assigned network address, converted it into binary, and then showed us where the three parts start and end. We now need to write in the 1001. So a 1 would go there and a one would go there. It's always going to be aligned with the right edge of the field. It would look like this. We're gonna revisit a tool that we covered last week because it's actually used here at the end. We kind of covered the tool out of order. We added it in last week, but you didn't really need it for any of your activities. Anding is a tool you need this week to be able to identify the network ID and broadcast for, say, the 10th subnet. We identified the 10th subnet using Scratchpad and then dialed it into the binary zoom using dial-in. Now we can use anding to change the host bits in binary zoom to all zeros, getting the network ID, and change the host bits again to all ones, getting the broadcast address. And from that, knowing the network ID and the broadcast address, we're able to easily derive the usable host range. Anding, the fifth and final tool in our IP subnetting toolbox. We've taken this network scenario through the prerequisite user requirements and network settings to using finger math, then the binary zoom, then scratch pad and dial in to get to this point where we've identified subnet 10 as a subnet we would like to get information about. Anding will allow us to derive the network ID, the broadcast, and the usable host range for this subnet. We simply, with anding, deal with the host bits. So we would want to zero out the host bits. If they were not already zeros, we would replace them with all zeros. Then we would add this back up into a decimal number, working off of the dots for the dotted decimal, and we would be able to derive the network ID. To get the broadcast, we would change the host bits all to ones. Having the host bits all ones, we would then add this number back up octet by octet, so working in groups of eight, we would end up with our broadcast address of 150 five four two five five slash twenty five that leaves us with usable hosts we no longer need to be in the binary to compute the usable host range because we know it falls between the 128 and the 255 so my usable hosts here are all the tools in our toolbox it is complete now we have five tools in the toolbox and there's our prerequisites that we need an assigned network address and user requirements.